We live in uncertain times, and we're in the middle of a global pandemic. As a result, there's been a mad rush for guns, and today we're gonna discuss with a brand new gun buyer what he needs to know to get into this. Joining us on Shoot of the Series, my name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. We really appreciate you watching and giving us your support. If you like what we're doing, hit the like, hit the share, and hit the subscribe button so that you'll get notifications every time we've got a new video. If you really like what we're doing, come find us on Patreon. Now, in the last month, we've had a huge surge in gun sales, probably three million for, this, uh, for the month of March. As a result of this, standing in the gun store, getting a lot of the same questions, how to get started. Today, we've got a friend of the show, Jacob. And uh, Jacob, I know that you're soon getting into guns, how can I help? What can I do to help answer some of these questions? So with this current situation, how do I just get started? I'll tell you what, good question. Um, first thing to do is you want to start by going into any gun store and you can take what's known as the firearm safety test. It's a 30 question, multiple choice, and uh, you're gonna go through, you're gonna take that, I think it costs like $26, and you're gonna get what's known as the firearm safety card. Um, they're basically going to give it to you, the better stores are going to laminate it for you, and it's going to have a special Department of Justice number on it that they're going to use as a reference for every time that you buy a gun. The FSC card is good for five years. You'll be able to buy rifles, pistols, and shotguns with it, and it basically serves as your initial training to show that you understand the basic safety rules. Now, there's places that are going to test you on this. So these are some of the basic things that you need to know and, and really have a handle on because these are the things that are going to prevent you from having an accident later on. They need to be something you're so comfortable with that it just becomes, you know, rote memory. Um, so, one of the things that you can do is you can go online and you can actually prep for the 30 question test. Department of Justice actually has a, a prep page where you can read through the various text. You can take sample questions so that when you go in, you can take it, you can be comfortable. Be very careful about not answering the questions too quickly. Some are a little tricky. Uh, read them. Be very thoughtful about it, take your time, and then answer the question. So tell me, you just got a new driver's license. Did you get the, the real ID? Yeah. Okay. That's going to save you a lot of time right there. As of July this last year, they've come up with new legislation for the state of California so that when you're buying a brand new gun or ammunition, you're going to need to have the real ID to show, and they're going to make a copy of that. And what's going to happen is, is the first time you buy guns, if you don't, um, it, you're, you're going to have to go through a 10-day waiting period for starters. Um, if you go out and try to buy ammo without having a gun in the system, you may have to wait several days for the uh, background check to clear. Once you actually have a gun in the system, then it's going to be a lot easier. It'll be instantaneous. It's going to cost you two bucks to do a, um, a transaction for ammunition. Um, however, first time you go in to buy ammo, if you haven't already got a gun, you can expect that you're going to have a $20 transfer fee uh, the first time that they run a background check on you, and it could take anywhere from two, three, four days before they call you and say, hey, Jacob, come pick up your ammo. All right. So, if you don't have the real ID, if you have one of the more common driver's licenses is to say federal limits apply. What they're going to do is they're going to require you to have a, another secondary form of ID to prove who you are. And that means you're either going to need a birth certificate or you're going to need a passport. And they're going to take a copy of that along with your driver's license so they can verify who you are. Um, when you buy a gun, you can also expect that they're going to want you to be able 
to prove your residency. So they're going to want to bring in something like a municipal water bill, something where they can trace it and show exactly where you live. Um, rental agreements, um, property taxes, things like that to show you can actually prove where you live. Have you given much thought to what kind of a, a, a pistol you want to buy? Probably more of a revolver. You like a revolver? Um, well, I'm a revolver guy. I like revolvers too. They have a lot of uh, uh, advantages because they're super simple to use. Um, right now, because of the big rush on guns, it's actually easier to get a revolver than say a semi-auto. Everyone's going into the stores, they're looking for a cool 9mm, but you know, there's this thought within society that somehow revolvers are old school, um, some people think they're obsolete, and as a result of that, you might have an easier time finding a revolver in the stores because so many of the semi-autos have been sold out. So a revolver's actually a really good way to go. Um, I know that we're looking at a lot of ammunition that's been sold out, and 9 millimeters very hard to find. But in many cases, it's easier to find 38s or 357s, and the beauty of the revolver is the versatility that you get. Now, for example, um, I've got a 357 right here, and just for the, the audience, I want to show that we're safe and clear. We can have a conversation with no big surprises. We're safe to handle this. Um, I normally recommend to new buyers that are looking at a revolver to consider getting a 357 Magnum. Um, generally, you're going to have a frame that's a lot beefier. Um, and what that's going to do is the, the, the beefiness of the frame, the, the weight of the gun is going to help reduce recoil. And if you buy a 357, that gives you the versatility of being able to run 357 rounds, 38 Special, or even 38 Plus P, which bridge the gap between 38 and 357. The, the beauty of a revolver is, this is as far as you ever have to take it apart. Easy to clean, very dependable. If for some reason you should have a misfire, all you have to do is pull the trigger again and it brings up a fresh one. So a 357 is a great way to go, super versatile, super easy to, to take care of, and it'd be a really good choice. Something else to consider is um, when I'm working with, with new clients, I like to, I like to recommend either um, a 357 revolver that will take 38s or even possibly a 9mm. And we've got one here, I just want to show safe and clear again. Um, the beauty of the 9mm is that it's, it's inexpensive to shoot. You can pick up a box of 50 range rounds for anywhere from $13 to $15. And you're going to find that the performance of the 9mm is going to be very similar to a 38 Special. The recoil is going to be about the same. So in terms of handling, they're both going to offer a lot of the same um, performance but with different benefits. Uh, with a semi-auto, you're going to be able to carry 10 rounds in the state of California. Um, generally, people like that because the advantage of having more of a round count, whereas revolvers are usually limited, usually five, six, seven, maybe an eight shot. Um, so you kind of have to weigh those out. Everything is a compromise. Have you spent much time shooting already? A little bit. A little bit. What have you had a chance to shoot so far? A uh, semi-auto and a revolver. And for some reason, the revolver just kind of piqued your interest more. Yeah. It's not a bad way to go. Um, I, I think that if you know how to use a revolver, it's a great platform. Um, a lot of it is like comparing Mac versus PC. They're just different platforms. Um, there's no perfect gun, everything is a compromise, but in the end you kind of have to go with your gut and, and follow that and be comfortable with whatever choices that you do make. Um, some of the leading revolver manufacturers in America would be things like Smith & Wesson, Ruger, and Colt. Taurus is a good brand, they've got a good warranty. Um, and I would probably stick within those particular 
um, manufacturers for dependability and as well as warranty work. Um, you have any idea what it costs for something like a revolver? Okay. Well, get ready to spend probably between six and eight hundred dollars. It's also a good idea to go out and do what I would call try before you buy. Um, they all run a little bit differently. They're all going to fit a little bit differently in your hand. And the more that you shoot, the more models that you have a chance to go hands-on with, um, the better idea of what you're going to get um, and narrow things down and then not have buyer's remorse. Oh, I should have got a four-inch barrel instead of a six-inch barrel. Um, you know, it's like test driving a car. You know, test drive guns just like you would test drive a car. And that way you make sure you're getting exactly what you want. Anyway, if you don't have any more questions, we'll wrap things up. Um, I want to thank my friend Jacob for coming in today. Uh, we're going to get him trained up, make sure that he's good and safe once he does get his firearm. Um, look forward to breaking in a new guy into revolvers. You're going to have a lot of fun. Anyway, if you have more uh, questions, you can check out the information box below. Um, we'll put up things where you can find the test prep from the DOJ. We'll, we'll talk about a little bit about the different manufacturers and uh, study up before you go out and make your purchase. Don't just make a, a panic buy. Uh, do your homework and make sure you get what you want. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank Jacob for stopping by today. And on behalf of Shooter the Series, my name's Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Y'all take care.